The question is that they stand, those clauses one to four stand part. I call the Honourable Madam Michael Chairman. Woodhouse. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I will take a call on the uh, clauses one to four of the, of the legislation, and in particular the commencement of the various uh, improvements to parental leave and employment protection and now keeping in touch uh, days. And I note that uh, part one will come into force on 1 July next year, seven and a half months' time, which, without wanting to labour the point, Madam Chair, really does beg the question why the public didn't get a chance to have its say on that. And now, I will uh, accept that the Green Party's rather unusual reason for this, putting aside their noble commitment to open and fair democracy, was that the bill had already been considered by a select committee a couple of years ago, and there were a number of submissions. However, I add to that that it was very clear from the Minister of Finance at the time that the bill would not pass, that the best estimates of the cost of, this, of the legislation when it was a member's bill in Sumeroni's name was in the region of $240 million over four years. In fact, uh, it was probably um, twice that. Uh, not, not, however, what the Minister of Finance at the time said, $250 million per annum, not quite that much, but certainly what we now know, and this is relevant to the commencement, is that it is effectively around $60 million per annum per increase. And so uh, there were a number of submitters, and David Seymour mentioned this in his intervention in the first reading speech, that there were a number of submitters uh, rather, who were absent from the bill submission process and who did not submit to select committee simply because they knew the bill would not pass. And so it is not appropriate to say that, that it, it, it doesn't matter that we didn't put it to a select committee, which we had time to do. We still have time to do that. We have another seven and a half months before the straightforward increase from... Uh, uh, 18 to 22 weeks comes into effect on 1 July next year, but we simply did not take that opportunity. Now, the other purpose of the scrutiny of that uh, legislation was actually the costs and the timing of the introduction, the implementation of the legislation, no doubt influences the Crown costs. Now, I accept, in fact, we haven't made too much of this, that while the reason for um, vetoing this as a member's bill was because the fiscal impacts were more than minor, it is entirely now the government's prerogative to decide that amongst the other priorities that it has within its gambit of, of uh, policies and laws that it wants to pass, that it sees this as affordable. That's understood. But I, I, I remain concerned that the amount of financial scrutiny that is influenced by the commencement dates of this legislation is still poor. It has a disclosure statement that's not a RIS that goes through, I think, a woefully inadequate assessment of the fiscal costs of this change. Again, it's entirely appropriate the government is able to, uh, to, to pass the legislation. But we are doing it without the normal scrutinies. It hasn't even gone to a cabinet committee, much less a select committee. And I would advise the ministers, who are relatively new, and they'll know this soon enough, that the cabinet committees are the dragon's den of government policy. Before they even get to the select committee, they will be scrutinised. They'll be worked over by officials. They'll be challenged by ministers of other parties. And that is an appropriate thing to do. None of this has happened, and yet the timing of the implementation of this bill would certainly enable that to have occurred. And it's very disappointing that the first bill that the government will pass, because it has the support of the overwhelming majority of the members of this House, is done so in a manner and in a time frame that really is the antithesis of good democracy. We had the time. The commencement dates are here. 
They do not come into force at first blush until 1 July 2018, the second stanza Madam four Chair, years later. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Honourable Louise Upston. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, it's my first opportunity with you in the